Oh, yeah. No reason. All right, guys. Graham oh. here. And Stephanie. And Stephanie. And very brief intro. Um, by popular demand, there was a lot of comments in the last, not the last video, but I think one the of the first, first videos. The first video. About how I did not let Stephanie speak enough. <laughs> And I would agree that anytime Stephanie can speak more is a good thing. So we're going to do a video where it's more of Stephanie sharing uh, the birth of the quintuplets. A little bit more of a backstory. For yeah. Birth. And yeah. And honestly, just more information, I feel like. But also on that, I will say like that was our first video. And even the ones after that, I feel like we're better. For sure. So. I think you have to know we, I think like 10 minutes before we recorded that, I was like, we should just record the first video yep. tonight. Yep. And <laughs> With like no plan. That's no kind of how, that's kind of how we do life. It is how we do life. Honestly. And. Punt. What's that? We punt it. We punt it. And then I would just say, um, I feel like we made that and didn't think it would get nearly the amount uh -uh. of views. Like I was saying no. like maybe a hundred people like friends and family would watch it. And it, it just kept growing and growing and growing. Yeah. And so anyways, we're making a new video here for Stephanie to give a little bit more of her um, experience. Cause I do think it'll be really good for other women to watch it and be able to see it. Um, and then I think the last thing I would just say is the majority of these people don't know Stephanie and I. Yeah. Um, we have a great relationship. Uh, it's the best out there, honestly. <laughs> um, but I was like, I'm just naturally a quieter person and I am not comfortable in these situations <laughs> and you do much better at that. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I feel like it could seem that way. And again, like I feel like now that we've done it a couple of times, it's easier. Getting more comfortable. Yeah. yeah. It, a little bit. It's still really awkward, but yeah, we're, we're learning. That's better i guess <laughs> and i would yeah. just say like backstory is having kids has like been our dream mm -hmm. and i am a naturally expressive person yes yes very and so and i'm not nearly as much <laughs> at all like i always feel awkward when people give me gifts i'm like what do i do thanks i think what people need to know is like this is our dream coming true we didn't dream of having quintuplets but no. having a lot of kids having a lot of kids and i'm just freaking excited so yeah. like my mind is going at a thousand miles an hour i'm a little bit talky but i'm working and you love it. telling people about it and i do love telling people and so about it. yeah so i'm definitely not going to apologize for being excited about and that's not to say that i'm not excited about it either yeah. <laughs> like that's the thing i'm just i'm not as expressive cool so i think that's all the cool. intro cool we need to talk about so yeah stay on track. we do have a script we're gonna be a little have, more organized yeah. here and then for those that have watched previous videos the last video we did was our infertility part one video mm. and we are going to continue that yeah. series, but we just thought this would be an important video mm -hmm. to have. So, yeah. With all that said and out of the way, Stephanie, it's going to be kind of like question answer style just cause just to give a little bit more. Structure. Just yeah, exactly. Keep it structured. But I'm still not talking. The most <laughs> Stephanie is. <laughs> I'll do my best and I'm going to do it. Where are the tissues? I'm going to do my best not to cry, but I cannot guarantee anything. I'll have to get the tissues at some point. So, okay, I got it. <sighs> anyways, Stephanie, very That's quick me. intro. Who are you? For those that this might be their first video watching or time listening. You didn't tell me that was going to be the question. <laughs> I don't know how to describe who I am. My name is Stephanie. I'm 27 years old. And I recently gave birth to quintuplets. And Done. how tall are you? I, feel like I am five foot two inches. <laughs> At one point in time, the doctor said I was five one and a quarter, but I'm more five two, so that's what I'm sticking with. And what was your pre-pregnancy weight? Uh, 125 pounds. Crazy. Can't believe I'm talking about this. On the oh. oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. How dare you ask women their weight? And then I do wait, think... Wait, you had to ask what was the point of... Just because the more weight and the more height you have, the better chance of a quintuplet pregnancy you have. Okay, I thought we were going to say like how much how weight much you I gained. gained. Yeah. Okay, sure. What was your final weight? One eight, was it 189? It was 189 at the triathlon yeah. when we checked in. Yeah. A lot of it was swelling. Yeah. But. Like five pounds of it. Yeah. 
And then we Which really will... wasn't nearly as much weight as I thought I was going to gain. Mm-hmm. And had we gone, a, I had gone a couple more weeks, I probably would have gained more, had been heavier. But anyways, because that was the time when they like really grow a lot. And we will have another video where we talk a lot more about or give a better update on the babies. But today is July 11th and just 7-11. Very, very briefly, how are the babies doing? They're doing phenomenal. Yeah. Do I get to tell about what happened today? We'll share that at the end. Okay. Yeah. Can I just talk about their breathing? Mm-hmm. I'm, I didn't want exp- exciting things to, you know, want to wait. But anyways, um, three of them are completely off of breathing support as of today. Two, two more of them got off of it today. And then two of them are on what they call high flow. And that's like the next step before, before going to room air. So they're all really close to being breathing on their own mm-hmm. and they're amazing. doing really really great that's on awesome. where they're at too so and we just say thank you to anyone who's been praying for mm-hmm. them so we believe prayers yeah been one of the most important things in all this so yep 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 okay so with that said stephanie yeah <laughs> why did you want to become a mother such a hard question to answer I don't really know what the answer is, honestly. I just have known that I've always wanted to be. I think it's kind of one of those things that, like, I don't know, comes naturally, I guess. And I feel like, and maybe this is cliche to say, oh, no. <laughs> don't touch the lamp. <laughs> but I feel like that's something that, like, little a lot of little girls dream about maybe not dream about but like they always want to play house and they want to play dolls and like I was that type of I wasn't I wouldn't even consider myself like a girly girl growing up Hmm. but like that was the one thing that I remember doing a lot Hmm. was like playing house I loved playing house in fact whenever we go over to our like friend's house this is growing up with like I don't know it's probably like six I like Hmm. have vivid memories of us like going there and we would always play house Hmm. So I don't know. I think that's like just something that's kind of been, I don't know, on my heart and mind from a very young age. Um, and I freaking love kids because they just don't care about anything. Like they just like love you regardless, Mm. especially like little kids. (laughs) As they get older, I know it changes, but like I've worked with little kids for a long time and like it doesn't really matter what you do. They just love you Mm. if you're like fun to be around. If you're fun. Yeah, if you're fun. (laughs) But um, yeah, and I guess I've just always wanted that. I also am from a big family. And so, I don't know, I feel like that kind of plays a role in it, too. Not just, like, wanting to have a big family, but just, like, I don't know, being the parent of a big family, I guess, if that makes sense. Because you grew up in a big family. Yeah, and I've seen how it has played out. Yeah. That makes sense. It's a fun game. And it's pretty cool. (laughs) The Johnson crew, (laughs) when they're all together, is wild. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's really cool. Even as adults. I do think, on that note... Before I met you, I don't think I ever thought about having a big family. Mm-hmm. Like I knew they existed. They were always <laughs> that like one or two families in your church. They that have a big a van. And you're like, That's kind of a cool family. But you, just, I just had never put a lot of thought into and it. And they always have a big van. And they always have a big van. But yeah, it's like once I met you and saw your family, how everyone interacts. I convinced him. It was just fun. And it's yeah. really cool to your family because it's not like all six of you guys are like similar no, all have your we're own all very on. different people. But anyways. And then what did you do before you got pregnant? I think that's important to talk about. What, what did I do? Yeah, just like what's your um, backstory with work? Um, really just coaching. Um, I've worked in some like daycares and stuff too. But um, yeah, coaching gymnastics. And... I've done various ages. I've done a lot of 
preschool though. Mm -hmm. I would say probably the majority has been preschool, which like, I know a lot of people don't like the preschool age, but I think it's like one of the best ages Mm -hmm. because it's when they start to be like super silly and like have their own personalities. And again, like they just like, will just come up and randomly hug you for no reason at all. And it's just so funny. Um, And then you do every once in a while get the one that's really sassy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. (laughs) But for the most part, the kids love you. Yeah, they're really funny. And it was, I think for me, it was always nice just to see how much they love you. It's pretty cute. They're pretty cute. But, um, yeah. So that was like the majority was coaching preschoolers. Um, What sport, Which, gymnastics. Gymnastics. I mentioned it. Oh, okay. Um, Which... I'm not saying that it's going to make me a pro mom or anything, but I feel like if you can wrangle together nine preschoolers in a massive gym setting, I think that gives me a better chance (laughs) at mothering five children of the same age. So Mm -hmm. that helps me feel a little more confident (laughs) about that. But anyways. So you knew that you wanted to be a mom. This is a dream. Mm Mm-hmm. I always knew you were going to be an awesome mom and you are an awesome mom before having kids. How many kids did you want? I never put like an exact number on it. I just knew I wanted a lot. (laughs) And like, I grew up in a family of six. So it was kind of like at least five, if not more. (laughs) And I just didn't think it was all going to happen. at once. In fact, this last year we sent out a Christmas letter and part of it was we said our biggest dream is to have a big family and that we were like doing fertility treatments and that we might be pregnant at that point. We didn't even know by the time we sent those out. And like shortly after that, we found out that we're having five. I'm like, wow. Okay. And we were pregnant. And we were pregnant technically at that time. Yeah, that's true. You just didn't know. Um. Yeah, I do think we were, I feel like when we talk with friends about, like, how many kids do you want? All of our friends had, like, very rigid answers almost. It was, like, two, maybe three. And we were, like. That's, like, the class. Yeah. The, I'm like, why, like not, why not five? I just want a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah. People, we would never really put a number on it. Nope. People would just ask, and we would just be, like, I don't know, a lot. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up having ten eventually. Who mm. knows? We've got the church bus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you know you wanted a lot. Mm-hmm. Um. And I don't think we're gonna go into the backstory of why we pursued fertility treatment. That's in the other video before yeah. this one. But I do think you go ahead and sharing like what was pursuing fertility treatment like for you? What was that experience like? Well, it's really interesting because I feel like a lot of people don't do fertility treatments until they're already starting to try and get pregnant and kind of go through the hardships of fertility treatment, if that makes sense. Like, it's kind of like, like I I knew for a long time that I was going to have to do fertility treatment. So the actual fertility treatment part of it wasn't, I feel like it wasn't, like it was still hard, but it wasn't nearly as hard as, it, as I think it could have been, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because I knew going into it, that we were going to have to do it hmm. like probably five years in advance. Does yeah. that make sense? Um, I think the hardest part was that time leading up to it. Like finding out that we were going to have to do that. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like going through like finding out that Beth pituitary cyst and not getting a cycle and not really finding somebody to help us figure that out and like is this okay for me not to have this or blah blah blah. is this gonna mean that I can't get pregnant or whatever Hmm. um and then I don't know at at some point somebody did say like you'll probably be able to get pregnant but you'll you'll have to have some help and Mm -hmm. I feel like hearing that was like really helpful and knowing that was possible um and then of course like when we actually talked to our fertility doctor and he was like this is gonna be so easy yeah apparently it was 
it was ish what <laughs> was ish <laughs> um <clears throat> but i don't know i mean it's not fun because hmm. it's like i feel like this is i think before like we actually started doing fertility treatments like this last year and a half or whatever um i'll say about five years ago ish give or take i feel like what was hard about that was i felt like the one like amazing thing that women can do i wasn't gonna be able to do that by myself if that makes sense mm -hmm. and i've always been like a do-it-yourself type of person mm. And so like when I found, like kind of figured out like I wasn't gonna be able to do it myself, like that's kind of hard. Mm. Um, so I think that was like the toughest part. Mm. But then like I also knew that like God was gonna take care of us and that eventually this was gonna be a really cool story. Never anticipated it was gonna be like this. Nope. But um, yeah. Here we go. Stop. <laughs> 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 where are the tissues <laughs> yeah. man so i've always known it's gonna be okay yeah I, but i didn't know what that looked like um and that can also be tough i think i do better at knowing not knowing what something's gonna look like than maybe you do mm. um but it still doesn't mean i don't struggle with that like that's that's hard because yeah. you still end up like you kind of end up going through those like questions of like is this actually going to happen or not? Like what? And you just like, you want to know. Yeah. And it's hard to kind of walk in the shadows, I guess. And then for the person that's just watching one of our videos, what did we do fertility treatment wise? Um, ovulation induction and IUI. And IUI. Yep. Hmm. Which um, is intrauterine insemination for those that don't know. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to ask, dealing with the fertility treatments. So we did get, we got pregnant on our fourth round. Mm -hmm. What were those, how did it like land on your heart, those first few rounds of not getting pregnant? How'd you handle that? Great terminology there. <laughs> um, I think it, the, the tough part was because the doctor was like, this is going to be really easy. And I was told like, technically my fertility was really good. I just wasn't having the signal to actually ovulate. Um, and so like my anticipation was, all right, it's going to be easy. And then, you know, it didn't happen. And so that was like a bummer. Yeah. Not fun. It's not ever fun to see a negative test when you want it to be positive. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah were you ever mad no i don't think so just sad a little bit because yeah. i knew it was gonna happen mm -hmm. i just wanted it to be sooner <laughs> yeah but it's not my timing yeah. so and i would say too like i feel like so a lot of people today i don't want to talk a lot here but a lot of people today when they see 27 year old pursuing fertility treatment they would might say that's so young to do fertility treatment but in our eyes we were always like we won't have kids you know well what's so interesting is like i don't remember when i had i remember telling you and i think it's before we even started fertility treatments mm -hmm. and saying i always like again i always want a big family mm -hmm. i always pictured myself already having a couple to a few kids mm -hmm. before I was 30. Yeah. And then we got pregnant with quintuplets. And I just think like God has a sense of humor. For honestly. Sure. Like yeah. I just feel like I said that to you and God was literally like, <laughs> you have no idea. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I feel like he was literally like just chuckling. Yeah. Um, in like an exciting way. Yeah. If that makes sense. Not, not a like a, yeah. yeah, not like a you idiot, mm -hmm. but like, Kind of like, oh, you have no idea what I have in store mm -hmm. for you. Um, and, yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Mm. So I, I feel like one of the most common questions we get in this pregnancy is, what was your mind? What was going through your mind at the first ultrasound? 
So what was... Or like when we first found out it was quintuplets? No, I like the first ultrasound. Like... Um... I'm trying to think back to like the first ultrasound because I feel like usually I get the question, we get the question of like when you find out you're having quintuplets. Okay, sure, yeah. And I always say it's like a slow burn mm -hmm. because it was like we got the blood work back and we're like, okay, we, we might be having multiples. We don't know how many. Never thought it was quintuplets, mm -hmm. ever. Never crossed my mind. I never even really heard that word, honestly. Um, and then the first ultrasound was showing the five sacks but only two heartbeats <clears throat> and so then we had to wait a whole nother week to see like maybe there'll be more heartbeats maybe it'll stay the same like we just didn't know um and then and then it was all five heartbeats so like that first ultrasound it was kind of like i don't know i i feel like when i first saw it i was like okay that's at least triplets mm -hmm. and it was kind of like whoa but almost like like an excited whoa not a terrified whoa mm -hmm. and honestly i don't know if i ever really got like terrified if that makes sense i feel like i mean i remember after we saw the five heartbeats i told you i just want them to be okay And I didn't want to be on bed rest, which I accomplished both those things. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing great. Yeah. And I didn't technically ever go on bed rest. Yeah. That was literally the first thing I said to you. Mm -hmm. But like, other than that, I knew it was going to You said be something right. also when we went into the house that night, I think. It may have been, not been that night, but. Oh, I don't remember this. You just said, there's a reason God gave us five kids. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. said that a couple times. Yeah. I think that was like one of the first times. So. And I think that's why I was never really <clears throat> like freaked out. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's like a lot of things where it's like, holy cow, mm -hmm. like what are we going to do here? But, and like, how does this work? <laughs> but I, yeah, I just knew was, there's a reason because it wasn't supposed to happen, mm. you know, based on everything and stuff. So. And yet it did. It did. And they're here. And they're here. Yeah, I just always, I remember hearing a sermon one time where it talked about a lot of times our walk, you can be happy and you can be sad at the same time. And I think that was the most defining moment for me, probably for us though, just like mm -hmm. feeling insanely excited. Yeah, like I think I was more scared than you were. Yeah, you were. Yeah. You were way more scared than me. Enough. Which is such a weird thing because, mm -hmm. like, you'd think I would be freaking out yeah. because I'm the one who's pregnant. <clears throat> but, like, it also, I feel like, I mean, people, when you hear of, like, high order multiples, the very first thing is, like, how, not necessarily how unsafe it could be for the babies, but also how, how unsafe it could be for the mother. And so I think that's, like you went into that i feel like right away whereas i went into i want the babies to be okay yeah i was concerned for you mm -hmm. so so it's just kind of it's an interesting but it makes sense i mean you don't ever want to watch somebody you love going through something mm -hmm. i don't want to say terrible because i don't think pregnancy is terrible yeah life-changing absolutely yep. yeah Okay. Hurtful, painful. Yeah. Painful. Uh, you don't want to watch a loved one go through something painful. Mm. Hurtful or painful. What? <laughs> Hurtful or painful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways. <laughs> so, next question is, what was, what were some of the most difficult parts of this pregnancy for you? That's a loaded question. Um... I love food so much. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> anticipating being pregnant, I was so excited to see what kind of weird cravings I'd have. Because literally before this, 
you'd make fun of me for eating ketchup on Brussels sprouts with my with scrambled eggs. And I just thought that tasted so good. And that was before even being, ever being pregnant. So I was just so excited to see what type of weird, funky cravings I would have. And um, I did not ever have that. In fact, it was a miracle if I could eat food. So that was, I, I actually think I like cried probably more than once about how I just wanted to eat food. <laughs> because I missed like sitting down and enjoying food because like chewing and chewing was so hard too so oh, that was rough mm-hmm. but at least my saving grace was was fruit fruit yeah. I was able to chew and eat fruit and that was that was really really good but that okay so that was that was hard throughout the entire pregnancy I would say I'm trying to think um I think any time that I'd have like days where, like I remember when we went to Mexico and I threw up like four times within like two hours mm. and that was the most that I, and that wasn't even from like eating anything. That was just, I don't even know. I just kept throwing up and it was really annoying. Like things kind of like that were really obnoxious um, and hard. Just like, yeah, you like, Especially throwing up at night was really hard because I feel like I had accomplished like getting calories in through the day, which like I had to try and get a ton of calories in. And I feel like I like got through that. And then I would throw up and I'd be like, it was all for nothing. Um, So how many calories were you supposed to get every day? Technically 4,000. Technically 4,500. Technically 4,500, but we never tried to get to 4,500. We did try to get to 4,000 though. That and that favorite. may have only gotten a couple times. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we, maybe we did more than that. We got our systems down. Yeah. <laughs> but towards the end when it was getting it was getting a lot more difficult, I think just because my stomach was getting mm-hmm. smaller and because they had been growing so well. Um, like they were already like really big for their age. Um, I feel like that was even like, I feel like Dr. Ellie even said something about like just do what you can yeah and that was and then i think we kind of shifted our our goal to 3500 but also like if it needs to be between 3000 and 3500 it'll be okay so anyways um yeah it's a lot and it's really hard to get that many calories in when your stomach feels like it's this big and you're sick why was it so important to get that many calories? Helps them grow. Yeah. And it helped them grow. It really did. Um, so, yeah. And I would not have been getting those calories in had you not uh, helped me. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I just remember <laughs> you'd be like, <laughs> I don't care if you like me right now, but do you still love me? Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> this video is not about me. But no, it was tough. Like, because I knew I was driving you <laughs> insane, but I knew you had to do it. So, and I, I wouldn't have been able to. It, I probably would not have consumed anything mm-hmm. had you not been there to help me do it. Um, because I couldn't even like prepare anything for myself. I was so just exhausted and tired and like mentally drained. That, like, the thought of, like, getting up to go grab something was even, like, difficult for me. So, to have to, like, prepare a smoothie was not... What was the saying in Mexico? Because you couldn't, you couldn't really, you didn't have any energy. What Alicia would say? She'd be like... Need anything, Steph? Need anything, Steph? No, it was everybody. Everybody would Everybody. need anything, Steph? Need anything, Steph? Need anything, Steph? That was pretty funny. Because our first call with Dr. Elliot, one of the things he said was, like, if you don't need to get up and do it, like go to the bathroom, you don't need to do it. Yeah. And I lived by those words. Yeah. Actually, I probably didn't live those words nearly as much as I should have. Mm. But it was good. I still wanted to be mobile yeah. as much as possible. So, but, um, can I say yeah. something? Real? Yeah. So it wasn't what people should know, though. Like, it wasn't just the food. It, you, we come to find out Stephanie had. Do you want to say the word or do you want me to? 
You got it. Okay. This is taking me like a thousand times of saying it. Yeah, and I, and I haven't practiced it nearly as much as you. Stephanie, I've forgotten, honestly. <laughs> Stephanie had hyperemesis gravidarum. Nice job. Oh, oh sorry. Huh? Oh, you're right. She had hyperemesis gravidarum shortened to HG for the entire pregnancy, I would say. Pretty much, yeah. And that is scary to have mm. when you're pregnant with multiples. Yeah. When you're trying to get in as many calories. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so food was tough. And then honestly, other than that, I feel like it, when I was going to labor was the next hardest thing. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, besides just like being tired all the time. But. Yeah. One of the one of the comments was, wow, he said the pregnancy was uneventful. It's like, okay, you have to. <laughs> Like it was, it really like was. We wanted it to be uneventful. Yeah. Like yeah. that was like the goal is to keep yeah. it baseline until the ba- babies were yeah. ready to come out, and so that's what we meant. Like, yeah. I this, mean, you think that that's the thing is with higher order multiples, like you have the potential to have so many things go wrong, mm-hmm. especially with somebody who's never been pregnant, me, mm-hmm. somebody who's only five two, me, and. I feel like there should be a third thing, but I have no idea. Um, we'll work on it. We'll yeah, yeah, and also just being pregnant with a ton of babies. Mm-hmm. Um, like you just have so many things that can happen that are so bad, mm-hmm. and we never, I never got to any of that, mm-hmm. which I'm blown away by, like. I just like, I still just like can't comprehend it. Yeah. So, anyways, before I start crying again, uh-huh. I have a question about the negatives. Of preg- not that the negatives. What was difficult about pregnancy? One thing that people should know about you, Stephanie, is a gymnast, level nine. I never competed level nine. Okay, you're very active. I practice level nine. What was it like? I mean, and then before you got pregnant, I mean, we were working out. Yeah. Almost every day. I'm not saying that. We work out. We work out. We worked out almost every day. We liked being active. Yeah. And so to go from being very active people to literally like doctor's orders are like, you never were on bed rest, but you were like, yeah. the doctor's orders were to sit down basically unless you needed yeah. to be up. What was going from active to basically staying down? Stay down. What was that like for you? <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. And like. It was weird, but not weird because, like, I physically didn't want to do anything. Mm. Um, but, like, it's weird because I always thought of myself as being the pregnant person that it was like, okay, I'm going to make sure I'm, like, walking and I'm, like, keeping my body moving. And then that happened and I felt terrible and I didn't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. And I did actually go on a decent amount of walks, um, especially earlier pregnancy. Mm-hmm when I was a little bit more, a uh, smaller and more, more mobile. Um, but like, I didn't really do a whole lot past that. Yeah. A couple of times I would do like a yoga video on YouTube, mm-hmm. but I maybe did that a handful of times throughout the whole pregnancy. And then, yeah, just towards the end, I was just like, like I was literally like pulling myself out from like, sitting down so i just i would literally just flop on the couch yeah. and sit there yeah. all day long it was crazy and that. then i would go up and take a nap i do have to share this like i got like because she was so active and then i have to do this i was like i'm gonna get stephanie like some adult coloring books yeah and like just Which honestly, like, I was so excited for. I know, just to give you <laughs> some activities to do while sit, sitting sitting down. sitting down, which is a great idea. And like a few days pass. Thoughtful husband. A few days pass, and like nothing's really happening to him. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Steph, are you gonna use the coloring books? And but this is we kind of laugh at it, but it's like the, it is when it like hit me. I didn't have the mental energy to even think about picking up, a, choosing a color. Yeah. And putting it to paper. Yeah. I couldn't, I, like, it was so hard for me. And I don't, I don't, it's wild. Yeah. I don't. And I think that was when it really clicked for me. Like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. This is, 
Yeah. I mean, I knew a lot was going yes, on before that. Yes, of course. But, but yeah. Yeah. I didn't even really like, cause I like, I think we had had a conversation about it. And then like, that was kind of like where it kind of clicked to me. Like mm-hmm. I like literally can't think about doing that. Yeah. Like it's exhausting for me. So it, they sucked a lot of energy out of me. All sorts. Last question I want to ask about just the tougher parts of the pregnancy is for those that don't know, we also, we did move to Phoenix for the pregnancy mm. and we left all of our, um, we left our home, our community. We have an awesome community back mm. home. Um, close family. Like what was that like for you? What, that what was, was that sad. plane ride? <laughs> that was sad. Also didn't help with the plane ride. It was like the beginning of springtime mm. and it was a beautiful clear day in the Pacific Northwest mm. and we flew over the islands and I think both of us started crying and we're like, why does it have to be so pretty out right now? Yeah. <laughs> that was specifically just because it was a pretty area, but it was also, I think, clicking that it we were leaving. Yeah. It was a really weird feeling. I didn't like it. It was hard. Yeah. It was really hard. But we know we had to, so yeah. it made it easier. Yeah. yeah. And we knew we were coming back yeah. eventually, too. But in case someone's watching this, we're here. We're permanent Arizona residents. No, we're not. <laughs> we're going um, back eventually. So. We should know in. There were tough parts about the pregnancy, but there were also good parts about the pregnancy. What were some of your favorite parts of this pregnancy? Well, heck, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, I may even go back really far. Not that far, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I don't know if this is TMI or not, but like the day we did IUI on the day, on the time we got pregnant, um, they actually uh, let us look at your sperm under the microscope. Mm. That was dope. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. Swimmers, a lot. It of was swimmers. really, really cool. Yeah. Like, and just to like be like, okay wow like it and it doesn't doesn't take much and there's five babies here Mm. it's crazy anyways i had to go that far back then fast forward a couple weeks seeing the positive pregnancy test is like when you've been trying and didn't know how it's gonna go Mm. it's an amazing feeling Mm. and then the ultrasound even though we saw five sacks and we're like okay what does that mean um, I think actually after that ultrasound, the first thing I said, I think I started crying and I said the little heartbeat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's an amazing feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's two of our babies we have now. Mm-hmm. Five, and that was five weeks and four five days. days. Five weeks and five days. Five days after conception. Yeah. So early. Mm-hmm. And you already see their little life. Mm-hmm. And then a week after that, you see all five. Mm-hmm. So that's incredible. Oh, man, oh, man. Where's those tissues? Can I say one thing? Yeah, go. Go ahead. I think that's the first time I've really verbalized this. When when we left the first ultrasound, and you realize that you have the possibility of being pregnant with five, there could be a lot of people that would freak out. And then, I'm not even lying, Stephanie gets in the car, and we're kind of just like, and Stephanie goes, did you see that heartbeat? That was the first words out of your mouth. It's pretty special. <laughs> that just too nice when he's off. Uh, uh. I'm going to go grab tissues real quick. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, I have myself back together a little more. Okay, we got tissues. Okay, so let's go to that point. I can't guarantee I'm going to... Because all the amazing things are just... Yeah. What, you know, so that seeing the heartbeats were awesome. What else is? What what were some like? This thing, this story is insane. But what were some of the more just lighthearted, fun things about being pregnant for you? 
we can go back to some deep stuff. What do you mean? To give you a break from crying. <laughs> I don't know, like, <laughs> what were, like, just some small things that were, like, really cool about the pregnancy to you? I grew five babies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay. And I didn't, I don't understand how. <laughs> um, but I think when you start to, like, it's hard to know whether it's actually them moving or not. Mm. But I think when you do figure out that it is them moving and then you can see them moving, it's pretty wild. And then, But then you're like, I don't know which one is moving. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have no idea. And um, even though, like, from ultrasound and stuff, we kind of, like, knew, like, their placement and things. Um, I'm, like, pretty confident I know who was doing the majority of the moving. And now that they're out, I, like, am very confident I know who is doing the majority of the moving. Um, but, yeah, that. And then I just I grew really fast. I feel like it was like, I have like no like knowledge of how a regular pregnancy should grow now <laughs> because I'm like, I'll see somebody. I'm like, you're only 15 weeks pregnant. I was already this big at 15 weeks pregnant. Like, you know what I mean? Or like, oh, you're only 25 weeks pregnant. I was this big at 25 weeks pregnant. Like, I feel like that's like weird to me because in my head, I'm like, you should be bigger than what you are and whatnot anyways um not something else what do you think of that it was always it was always fun being out in public and stephanie to say like 24 weeks pregnant but she's really big at this point i was yeah i mean i yeah. was almost as big as i was when i delivered basically I and, um, at 24 weeks you know the question be like when's the baby coming out or like how far along are you like expecting it would be like you know, 36 weeks and you're like 24 weeks and people like, are well, like, well, no, I'm only 24 weeks. And people are just They're like really, really confused. It's like, are you okay, honey? <laughs> yeah. Like what? I think that it was funny. Like, yeah, I feel like when it was like 18, 20 weeks, that was when like, I feel like I really started getting asked in public, mm -hmm. which like before that I didn't really, but then people would be like, Oh, when's the baby do? I think when you start to walk awkwardly, mm -hmm. that's when people start to ask ask yeah. things, and then and then when they ask, it's like, what do I tell them? Yeah. Do I go ahead and go into this story, or do I just be like, yeah, soon, mm -hmm. and then leave it at that? Typically, we went into the story, but I feel like there was a couple times when I didn't mm -hmm. go into the story. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say the another fun thing. Mm -hmm, sure. Is that? Just like what do you enjoy about the yeah. pregnancy? Uh, every time we went to go see ultrasounds. Yeah. And um, I think the cool part about being a high-risk pregnant woman is that you get to do a lot more ultrasounds. I mean, like, we were doing it. In the, in the beginning, we were doing it like on a weekly basis, yeah. which was really cool because you like you really get to see them grow every single week, and man, they grow a lot in yeah, a week, it's... which is just wild. And I don't think it, people don't get to like actually see that, mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty wild. Can I? Yeah, I would just say yeah, like like week seven, it's turned from like the little heartbeat flicker to like you see kind of a little. Yeah. Maybe floating there. But then, like, I remember, like, week 11, week 10, week 11. It was like, that's a full on baby. It, it's like, wow. I, don't, I think it was before that, honestly. Yeah. We can, we'll go back. We'll go back and look at old shows. But looks like a baby is what we're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah like, like, head, body. Yeah. Kind, kind of legs, not really legs yet. But, like, definite, like, yeah. It's crazy. It's pretty cool. In black and white. Mm -hmm. Like, and so it's like, even like, I just am amazed by ultrasounds, honestly, that they can even pick up all that. But, um, yeah, I feel like it was always so fun to mm. see th see them. And then, like, by the time we came down here, it was, like, every other week. So it wasn't nearly – and we were kind of bummed about that. Mm -hmm. I think you so, you more so than me, but still. But it was this big thing to look forward to. It really was, it was yeah. Um, yeah, especially when we got to, like – get their sizes and stuff because hmm. they didn't measure every single week um but yeah 
that was always exciting just like see like how big how big they were mm-hmm. and then when harper hit that one pound that was a big deal big deal yeah that was pretty wild so but it was also kind of fun just to like our sonographer was incredible i don't understand how she kept track of them mm-hmm. but she did yeah until that one day she was like Oh, and they got all jumbled up and moved from spots. And I think it was actually, I think it was Harper that, like, tried to, like, shove over into the middle more so. Crazy babies. Doesn't surprise me, though. I think, like, last question I would have about the pregnancy is, when the times were tough, to kind of go back on the tough note, what was what got you through? You. Honestly, um, because you would, I think the biggest thing that you would always say was it's only temporary. Mm -hmm. Um, and most of the tough times were when I had to like drink a big smoothie Mm. and I didn't like it. How many insurers do you think you had in the pregnancy? I don't know. Too many. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) Um, yeah. And then. You would remind me about how it's helping the babies. And I got frustrated with that because I was like, oh, I know. <laughs> um, what was the phrase yeah. I like to use? Y- you got this. You got this. <laughs> but it was always as you would hand me the smoothie, and then I would be like, uh, and then you'd be walking away saying, you got this. And, that, and then you you can do this. But it was like, yeah, I was encouraging, but like not at the same time in a way. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> For Mother's Day, I gave Stephanie a note that said, I promise not to say you got this I today. was getting so sick of it. Because <laughs> it was, at that point, 20-something weeks. Yeah. Daily of, of <laughs> you got this. <laughs> of me having to drink the same thing over and over again. I think one day I, I am going to make the smoothie recipe and put it on YouTube. Okay, I'm not going to drink. I'll make sure you're gone. Just don't make it again, and yeah. I don't want to drink it. I'll drink it. Yeah, no, it's gross. Uh, yeah, actually, yes, yeah, you drink we'll it. we'll make it. That would be a fun video. I did try to make you drink it a couple times, yeah. and you take a little sip here and there, but... Okay. Anything else you want to share specifically about the pregnancy that you can think of? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's weird because I was about to say I feel like I lucked out, but like I know it's not luck. Mm. Um, and God had this planned out perfectly mm. for us. Um, and I feel like having that as a reminder. Okay, this kind of answers your last question too of like when times were tough. Like, in the very beginning of the pregnancy, when it was, like, so unknown, but I knew there was five, I, like, like, like we had, we have said multiple times, but, like, I, I knew that God gave us five babies. Mm-hmm. So I knew he was going to get us through it. Mm. Um, because also, like, you think about, like, everything that we went through with fertility, and how like with like what we were doing and like the follicle sizes and one of the nurses even was like, I didn't think it was going to turn into one baby, like based on these numbers, more or less, like there shouldn't have necessarily been a baby there, let alone five. Um, and like with that, I like that was when I was like, I n- knew this was what he had had planned for us like it was just like with that little like it was like no doubt in my mind like god is the one that creates life and so he created these five lives that happened to be inside me um and he trusted me to carry them Mm -hmm. i have no idea why (laughs) Mm-hmm. 
Well, he picked. I'm biased. But <laughs> he picked a really good one. But it's like <clears throat> literally everything. Like I should not have been the type of person that could have brought five healthy babies into this world. And yet I did Mm -hmm. because he did that for me. Mm -hmm. And I think I've always known that that was going to happen from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I know that he takes care of us and it looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I guess I just trusted him. And I feel like that's a hard thing to do when you're going through something hard. Um, and there weren't, I'm not saying that there weren't like times that were like, I was definitely a few times I was like, why? Mm. <laughs> and, um, and I also thought, I wonder what this would feel like if it was one baby. Mm. <laughs> um, but man... Seeing those five kids now. That's pretty special. <laughs> Can't imagine it any other way. Can you say it one more time? <laughs> I can't imagine it any other way. Yeah. So, I'm extremely grateful. Hmm. And I think, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but I think trusting in the process is the key I guess um I remember at one point I discovered this song um during pregnancy and every time I listened to it I just bawled mm-hmm. um I don't even remember the name of it now I think it's hills and valleys yes that you remember that, that one uh-huh. yeah and <clears throat> it basically is like I can't even like I don't remember what the words are now, but it's basically like we don't get to see like the in-betweens, mm. um, but we get to see like the end in glory, which is like when we get to be in heaven. But like, I just like, it talks about like hills and valleys and stuff. And then just like talking about how it's going to be something amazing at, in the end and like this is becoming something amazing even before something even more amazing. And yeah, I don't know. I just like, I don't know. We'll link it below. (laughs) People can listen to it. (laughs) Anyways, it's amazing. And I just like, remember listening to him like, this is our life. (laughs) So anyways, Next question, you okay? Is there another question? Yeah, I got some more. Oh, I thought that was the last question. No, no. Okay. We got a few more, but we'll move quick. Back is gonna hurt again. Um, can you describe? So, as Stephanie said earlier, you pregnancy, not a lot happened, yeah. but mind you, we weren't expecting to have the babies when we did. But talk about those, maybe like two or three days before the pregnancy. But before the pregnancy, before, <laughs> before the, birth. the birth, what that was like for you? <clears throat> really uncomfortable. Um, so we went to the hospital on Saturday night. Is that? Yeah, that's fine. Is it fine right there? Mm-hmm. We went to the hospital on Saturday night. And um, I would say about a week before I started swimming. Like I, I was going back and looking at pictures actually the other day. And I think I sent a picture of my, my foot to my family like a week maybe a couple days before that saturday and was showing them the size difference of my feet and my right foot was much more swollen than my left foot and then i think it just continued to swell up some and then by wednesday it was like really swollen and then it started swelling in my leg a little bit more to where it was like kind of awkward to like walk even and then like thursday it was really swollen and then Thursday, I would say, is when, like, the back pain Mm -hmm. started. Back and hips. It wasn't, like, excruciating at that point. Um, But it was just, like, kind of, like, okay, I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. And then I feel like I probably didn't sleep super great that night. I don't remember, honestly, Thursday night much. But 
I remember vividly Friday night. Yeah. And well, Friday we went into the doctor's office and just had like a normal appointment. Did ultrasound. Babies looked great. Um, my blood pressure was starting to go up a little bit more again. And, and then also with the swelling in my feet, our doctor was like, it might be another week, week and a half, two weeks, maybe even if we can stretch it out, you know, until you have to go into the hospital and not even for delivery, but just like for like monitoring because he was nervous about preeclampsia, um, because of the blood pressure and swelling. And then... Uh, Friday night, I did not sleep at all because I was in so much pain. I couldn't get comfortable laying down and we tried like four different beds, makeshift beds Pillow forts. and we're like, do we put it on this wall? Do we put it in this corner over here? Do we keep it on the bed? I just had thought like I had been sleeping funky and my back was starting to hurt because yeah, it, it just didn't down on me at all that that could have potentially been labor because I didn't know what labor was supposed to be like and um yeah so I didn't sleep at all and I remember like calling you up because we were not sounds so weird we weren't sleeping in the same bed because Great marriage. <laughs> promise one I like took up the whole bed with all of my cushions and pillows <laughs> so there was no space for you no. but two I also moved around a lot during pregnancy, and yeah, you would not have been comfortable sleeping there. Anyways, that's not the question. Um, but yeah, I didn't sleep at all, and yeah, that was really hard. I was I I love sleep, especially at night. <laughs> I love sleeping at night, and. I didn't get to do that, and that was really upsetting because, honestly, I was a great sleeper the whole pregnancy. <laughs> um, and so that happened, and the day before, the doctor was like, make sure you're still getting in the pool because that'll help with swelling and stuff. And so we're like, Saturday, I should try and go to the pool twice. So we went, I went earlier in the day, and usually the pool would help like relieve some of the weight or any pain that I was feeling, and... Saturday morning, it, it did help um, a little bit. Like, every once in a while, I would still be kind of uncomfortable. And then I remember after you wheelchaired me back, because we had gotten a wheelchair at that point because I wasn't walking a whole lot. Um, I remember s going from sitting to standing was the first time in, like, the last maybe 24, maybe not quite 24 hours, but almost 24 hours, that, like, it wasn't uncomfortable. And that was after being in the pool. So I was like, okay, pool's helping. And then I tried to take another nap. I maybe slept for 45 minutes, which typically I would sleep for like an hour and a half, two hours. Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't do it because I was so uncomfortable. So this is like Again. midday. Yeah, on midday Saturday. Midday on Saturday. Yeah. And then went back to the pool that evening mm -hmm. before dinner. And I couldn't find any, I couldn't get any relief from the pool at all. Like, it didn't help me like it did earlier in the day whatsoever. Or earlier in the pregnancy. Or, yeah, but yeah. even in the day. Yeah. Because there was some relief mm -hmm. that earlier that day, too. But definitely not how it would help me during the rest of pregnancy. But, yeah, and I was, like, kind of like, this is weird. I don't like this. And also, I'm in so much pain, and it's not going away. Um, and then you would ask me. What, do you think my need to go to the hospital? And I said, yes, I think so. I think so. Because that was the only way that I knew that somehow the pain, like I could be helped with the pain versus like trying to figure it out at home. I didn't, I was like, I think I'm so past the point of like, I just don't think we know what to do more or less. Did you think? Mainly, no, I didn't. In it labor? labor? No, yeah. no, I didn't at all. I, no, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Neither did I. Confession. <laughs> uh, I literally just thought it was like I was just like getting so heavy that my back was starting to hurt. And my literally my thought was if you go to the hospital, I'm going to trust whatever they say for pain medicine <laughs> is safe for the babies and that they're going to give it to me yeah. <laughs> more or less. That was my thought. Yeah. Um, 
because I just knew I wasn't going to, nothing we'd, we'd do at home was going to help. So, yeah, so I was still at the pool, and we had decided we were going to the hospital. We're like, okay, let's eat dinner, and then we'll go to the hospital. But we're like, oh, we don't have any food. So you went and got Thai food while I f- finished up at the pool, and then um, and then I couldn't eat anything. Mm-hmm. I was just I, – I, like, was starting to, like, feel, like, sick, which, like, I was sick the whole pregnancy, but, like, I was starting to eat solid foods, and, yeah, I was just, like I, – I think I ate a couple pieces of chicken, and I was, like, I just don't think – I can eat the rest of I'm so uncomfortable. I don't want to sit here. I don't want to stand. And I was just like, I want to go take a shower before we go to the hospital. So I'm going to go do that. And so you were like, all right, I'll finish eating. You go take a shower. I'll get some stuff for the hospital. And um, <laughs> I was just like in the shower, not very comfortable. I had a little shower chair and I was finishing up my shower and I was sitting down and I stood up and apparently my mucus plug had fallen out and it was sitting on the chair and I was like, that was not supposed to happen. So then I called you up and told you, it's a good thing we're already going to the hospital because this just came out of me and I don't think it was supposed to. And then you freaked out and started running around the house. I swear you were like a chicken with your head cut off. <laughs> And you're like, where's this? Where's this? And I was like, I don't know. And then I think I had to tell you to calm down yeah. a few times. Yeah. Um, and I was too busy eating your leftover Thai food that you gave. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, we finally got everything. Got in the car. Started driving. You ran a red light, and I didn't like that. Sorry. I got, I got, re- I got really mad Sorry. at you. I got really mad at you. Yeah, punched me. I did. I did actually. I punched you. You had the strength of one woman (laughs) and five babies. It hurt. (laughs) I was pretty. I was pretty upset. Yeah. Because I wasn't safe. Sorry. Don't run red lights, people. I don't care if you're in Phoenix. Don't do it. Where everybody runs red lights. Phoenix is the dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's off topic. Sorry. Anyways, got to the hospital. Even the wheelchair that we, you were, you were like, we just need, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. And then we got up there and everything was super quiet and super calm. And I'm just like, okay, guys, can we speed this up a little bit, please? And then, um, they like checked some things, did ultrasound, babies are still okay. And then the doctor came in, she, um, checked my cervix and said all right you are six centimeters dilated and you're gonna have those babies tonight and that was a weird that was super weird to hear so how far along were you pregnant wise i was 20 well when she checked i was 27 weeks and one day when they're born they were 27 weeks and two days because it was 12 a.m and i count that as a day Mm -hmm. so um yeah and then it was like I swear my heart stopped for a little bit. It was a weird, it was. How, how was it receiving that news? Were you like mainly scared or mainly excited? Where were you? Because like you would be meeting the babies. It was like right in the middle, I would say. Okay. Maybe more towards scared. Simply because I thought I was going to have more time to prepare myself. Because mm. <laughs> um, I wanted to like prep myself for like what C-section was going to be like and stuff like that. Like. I just thought it was going to be much more of like a, all right, I'm being wheeled in. Mm. This is the day we're going to have the babies. And it was not like that at all. And it was late at night and I was tired, but I was also still in pain too. So I was just like so annoyed (laughs) Mm. with it. Like, I don't know. There were just so many things that were happening that, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I remember hearing it and like it kind of did the (laughs) thing. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm talking about where, like you kind of like choke up a little bit. Yeah. Um, then I think I was okay. I yeah. think it took you a little bit longer to feel okay. But. Yeah, I think I was a little bit more scared than you were, which is kind of the theme. <laughs> yeah. Pregnancy. But I, I kind of feel like 
I will say the one thing that is nice about doing a C-section, which again, I don't really know anything about actual labor. Um, but I knew that it was literally going to be like, okay, you guys take me and you, you get these babies out safely. Mm -hmm. And it's really like putting your trust in like that whole team. Yeah. Um, and they did a great job. Yeah. What was the C-section experience like for you? Okay. So I feel like everybody always has like terrifying, um, stories about epidurals. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and how they're like massive needles and blah, blah, blah and whatnot and how they're like super painful. Honestly, I was like so scared. I was like, okay, this is about to happen. I'm about to get it. And I was like, kind of like freaking out a little bit. And then all of a sudden she was like, okay, I'm done. It, well, actually it was more of like, all right, I'm done and get her on her back because you have to go really fast. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that was it. <laughs> I was like, I was very surprised that it didn't hurt nearly as bad as what I was anticipating. Mm -hmm. So I feel like people are just maybe working it up too much. Or maybe I have a really hate high pain tolerance. That might be the case, <laughs> given that I was in labor and I didn't know it. Um, and then they laid me down and I was like, oh, I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> because all my back pain was finally gone. Yeah. And I honestly was like, I feel so good. <laughs> it was a weird feeling because I like literally was out of pain really yeah. fast um and then and then i continued to stay out of pain after they were born and stuff too so that was great besides like the incision pain but yeah it was interesting to go back to i guess the operating room and i was kind of expecting to see you like really worried and anxious but you were just kind of sitting there like <laughs> ready to go and i know you probably that's because of medicine too and that yeah, there wasn't really like a whole, yeah, there, I mean, I wasn't in any pain at all. And yeah. like, I wasn't really like out of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I did feel relatively relaxed. There was one thing that they gave me, was it magnesium, I think it was. Yeah. They, and like that one's, that one's weird. Hmm. She was like telling me other things of how it can make you feel. And she's like, it kind of makes you feel like you're a little tipsy. And, like, it was weird. Like, all of a sudden, like, I was starting to feel, like, warm. And I was like, well, what's happening? And because that was something she else said. And, and then I was like, I was like, oh, yep, I think it's starting to kick in. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of, like, starting to feel a little bit, like, woozy-ish. And I was like, this is weird. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. <laughs> and then, event but then it, like, wears off. It's really strange. I don't fully understand it. But anyways. Um, but, yeah. And then I... They had a mirror, like one of those like rounded mirrors, mm. kind of on the ceiling, so you can watch mm -hmm. if you want to watch. And I really appreciated that because I would have stood right next to the doctors if I could have to watch it all happen, because that kind of stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, so. not me, but <laughs> not you. No, I love it. It was a cool experience. For sure. I know this is supposed to be me talking, mm -hmm. but how was it to see, for you to see each of those babies be pulled out? I want to know. That's what I wanted to ask you, though. Really? Because yeah. I didn't actually physically watch them get pulled out. That is true. You were like this. <laughs> yeah. And there was a thing in the way. Well, you did get to see when... Um, they brought them next. When yeah. they, the doctors would bring them. Okay, so I'll say... I will say, like... So, I come from a family. My dad's a doctor. My brother's a doctor. They are, they're the medical people in the family. I'm not. Blood, I'm not good with... <laughs> Opening up bodies, I'm not good with. I don't think I don't, most people are good with opening up bodies. Some people are. <laughs> Ones that want to be doctors. Yeah. Um, so I actually went into the C-section like really worried. Like, am I going to make it through this? <laughs> not because I don't want to, but just because I'm not good at that stuff. But yeah, anyways, you know how you're going to react. It was interesting. As they were pulling the babies out, there wasn't like one like ounce of me that was like, oh, this is gross. Or like, they're going to pass out. Like, it was... You're probably I, like solely focused on the babies. There's that. I think I still had adrenaline pumping through my system. Adrenaline. Okay. Um, and I will say I, there was still, I, I don't think I calmed down fully until the NICU doctor came back and was smiling. Mm. I think I was still yeah. worried because we had watched videos of even quintuplet C-sections. And in the video, like the babies are crying when they get pulled out. Yeah. And none of our babies cried. 
and at that they were all so quiet they're very quiet which actually freaked me out more Mm -hmm. i I thought there was something wrong um i was still all that to say though i was like this is my child and like this is the moment and i'm seeing them and i'm like they are so beautiful and um this is what we wanted right so it was really cool they were really small (laughs) so they were they were very small and um that I think like go back to the same analogy. I feel like they looked bigger than what I thought they were gonna look like, mm. which is kind of crazy. I was just gonna say to go back to the like the analogy of, or I don't know if analogy, but the example of like the the walk of life can be sad. You, you can be like walking in a sad direction and a happy direction at the same time. Mm. And I, I kind of feel like that's how the C section was for me. Mm. It was like I'm so excited to see my children get born, but. I'm also terrified right now, like for you, for them, um, all the unknowns, but ultimately, yeah, great experience, I'd say. So how was it for you once the babies were brought to your face? <laughs> I was not nearly as emotional as I thought I was going to be. And maybe that was the drugs. I don't know. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I, <laughs> I will say you kind of just looked. <laughs> you I was sort of out of it. I think what got me, though, was when he showed Harper. Mm-hmm. And this is the last one. Mm-hmm. And she goes, she moved her little mouth. Yep. And I remember saying, you like, she moved her little lips. Yeah. And then I think when they were all gone and they were starting to like put me back together was when it was like, that's it. Yeah. They're all here. Yeah. Like, holy cow. And then I don't know if that was before or after you almost passed out. But um, yeah. And I yeah. feel like we kind of. But the thing is, too, is like. Everything goes so fast, like in that. And I feel like when we're in the, whatever the other room is, it's like in between, like we're like after C-section to like sit there for a couple hours, Mm -hmm. make sure everything is doing fine. And I feel like that was, even before you went back to go see them, Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's when we both got emotional about it, I guess, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It, It was weird, like, There was like so much like going on, yet there was not the same. Like yeah. for how intense you would think this situation yeah. would be, everyone was very calm. Yeah. Which is like that's what you want. Yeah. In your medical team. <laughs> yes. You don't when want... you're getting your gut cut open, that's what you want. There's that commercial where the doctor goes up to the patient <laughs> yes. before the surgery and he goes, You are nervous? And the, and the patient's like, Yeah. And the doctor's like, Me too. Me too. <laughs> it's like that is not what you want. No. And like that's why we moved to Phoenix to was to work with the best people and I like if there's one thing this YouTube channel accomplishes, like <laughs> bragging on the entire medical team of St. Joseph's and Dr. Elliot. Like everyone's awesome. Yeah. Um so C section went great. Um, overall good experience for you. Yeah. And I think part of that what too is like you were prepared for knowing you're going to have a C-section. Yes. I C-sections think that is can helpful. be scarring, scarring for some yeah. women, but literally and figuratively. Yeah. Were you embarrassed at all when I passed out? Sort of passed out? No, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, always the big guys. Yeah, always the big guys, huh? I think it happens really often in C-sections though. Oh, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I like, it's weird because I had always thought that I would do, like, the whole, like, home birth situation. And, like, that was something that, like, I knew I wasn't going to do for, like, once we found out we have quintuplets. That was, like, the first thing I was like, okay, that's off the table. I don't need to worry about it, whatever. And, honestly, I'm glad I didn't have to worry about laboring five children. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine. I mean, they wouldn't allow you to do that anyways. But, like, knowing that I didn't have to worry about that, given that I had all this other stuff that I had to kind of go through and worry about Mm. i'm glad that that was the one thing i didn't have to worry about so that's kind of nice um and comforting i guess um but yeah i mean it c-section went really well and yeah i don't think it could have gone any better honestly Mm. i feel like it was so fast it did go very fast it was wild. we took a picture before we went in yeah and the babies were born 30 minutes after that picture was taken shout out to nurse Brittany. Yes. For having that idea. Yeah. I, I, it's really smart. She said, hey, 
parents need one more photo together before the babies are here. And I'm like, she said it. And I was like, you are so smart. Like, yeah. I'm so thankful you said that because that was yeah. not on my mind. Like, no. One more photo real quick. <laughs> Let's take one more picture. <laughs> Uh, as you're like freaking out that yeah. i'm about to get wheeled back there yeah, so that, yeah was, that was cool okay so i mean i feel like you could talk about all these little sections forever but let's ask this question to kind of like recap the first okay. question your dream of becoming a mom has come true i'm getting the tissue out getting the tissue ready how is it being a mom one, I'll say this first. It's weird being a mom when all of your children, when you have as many especially, mm -hmm. are not home with you. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I'm like initially, I like anticipated that happening. <clears throat> so that helps. And it's like a little bit sad here and there. And I'm just really excited for them to be home, even though it's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. But I... I love going to see them. Mm -hmm. And even when you see like weird things where you're like trying to figure out who they look most like. And it's just like, yeah, like they're going to have similarities to you and I or our families. And nobody, is, nobody else is family because they're our kids. And like, I don't know, that's cool. And yeah, I just love them so dang much pretty amazing and they haven't even done anything yeah <sighs> i think one of the um i feel like one of the a lot of examples when you hear about like how god got good <laughs> how god loves us through his son jesus christ and like there's nothing that we have to do and people always equate it to like when their child's born like the child is nothing has done nothing yet they love their child so much it's like it's absolutely true like yeah your baby comes out and your baby, I will say now they're kind of making faces and stuff. But like <laughs> in that moment, it's like this child has done nothing to, I don't know, deserve my love is the right <laughs> word. That sounds a little rough. But like you do. You love them so much. Yeah. And um, the way that's how God loves us is cool to think about. But And I feel like you don't, I mean, even like on that, like he loves us even more than we love our children. This is true. Way more perfect. <laughs> and like. Yeah. I like can't even comprehend that. Yeah. yeah. And I think you don't really know it until you've experienced it mm. either. Um, and I know not everybody's going to probably experience yeah. being a parent, nor does everybody necessarily want to be a parent. Mm. Um, which in my mind, it's sad because I've always wanted to be a parent. Mm. And so it's, I'm like, when I see them, I'm like, why would you not want to why would you not want this? Yeah. Um, because it really is. And I know like life is going to be hard, mm -hmm. but like life is going to be hard with anything, regardless of if you have kids or not. And like, I just don't care. Mm -hmm. Because I know the outcome is going to be so much greater. Than the, just the, than the hard. Yeah. The difficulties yeah, of pregnancy. <laughs> pregnancy and just like raising kids. Yeah. It's, and there is <laughs> alone five at the same time. And there's definitely just like something, um, like obviously men have a role to play, but like there's something uniquely special about a woman and like what you guys go through to do it. It's fascinating. It's, it's wild. Like, I mean, I could I could talk all day about just that whole process and yeah. just how like, yeah. And it's like. Being pregnant with five is insane, but like, I don't want to lose sight on the fact that like being pregnant Just with pregnant in one general. and growing a human inside of you is crazy. And I yeah. think like we just forget about it. And like, I will say, I don't care who I offend with this next part. So triggered and coming. <laughs> but like, as soon as these people start saying things like birthing persons and all this stuff, it's like, y'all have no idea what you're saying against women when you mm -hmm. say that, like. Um, it's wild. Like, yeah. I, I, I know. Like, this is such a cool story because it is five. But even if you were just 
if you brought one child into the world, yeah. it's still just an amazing thing. I think we lose sight of how incredible pregnancy is. Mm-hmm. I think just because it's, I mean, it's a normal thing now, just like we're humans. Yeah. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is like, you just think about like all the things that have to go right for it to happen. It's just incredible. Again, this could be a whole nother yeah. episode. So. so anyways, it's incredible and it's amazing. And I love. feel like we've lost sight of it. And I freaking love being a mom. Freaking love being a mom. Yeah. So what <laughs> happened today in the NICU? <laughs> that was. <laughs> got to hold. <laughs> Can't even talk. I got to hold all five. She got to hold all five. How was that? It was good. And it's funny because <laughs> I wasn't necessarily holding all five. They were just all <laughs> laying on my lap on pillows. You were making sure five didn't fall off your lap. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's the better. <laughs> but I still say I hold all five. No, absolutely. They did all five lean against me and I 100%. put my arms around them though. So that did, ha- we did do that too. How cool was it? It was really cool. It was so cool. <laughs> like it was wild. If I felt like we really felt like a family there for a moment. I mean, a moment. God, that, <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, and it was just so different to see all our faces side by side. Yes. Because like we've been saying stuff like, we see I would have never. Pictures side by side too, but it's not actually, the same. Actually, before I say this next part, can you actually, for those first time seeing the video, like, can you say their names real quick in the birth order? Do you want me to do middle names too? Sure. Yeah. So it's Adeline Catherine. Eliana Rose, Linnea Claire, Fisher Douglas, and Harper Lynn. Mm-hmm. And two of them are two pounds, two ounces. Two of them are two pounds, three ounces. And then Harper was two pounds, six ounces. Mm-hmm. But it went two, 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 three, two, 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 three, two, six. Which actually, I don't think that it went two, 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 three, two, three. Is that what you just said? Mm-mm. Yeah, it, and then two, six. I looked at the paper the other day. The, remember the yellow paper she wrote it on, the nurse? So Linnea was two, three, and Fisher. I, Okay. Anyways, um, what I was going to say was I've never thought like Eliana and Adeline look similar yeah. until we set them down. And they were lap. literally side by side. And I was like, oh, wow, they actually do yeah. look insanely alike. Like, Yeah, they look a lot alike. That was weird. but And they were so cute. They were so cute. <laughs> they were so cute. Um, uh, I will say lots of the nurses, I'm not trying to brag here or nothing, but they're like, it's pretty impressive you got five really cute uh, babies. <laughs> they're like, that doesn't always happen. Yeah, they're, they're adorable. So, you love being a mom? Mm-hmm. Are you excited to raise them? Are you scared at all? No. Yeah, me neither. I think we got this. Worried? Maybe. <laughs> um, Just kidding. This, again, could be like a whole other 30-minute video, but very briefly, can you talk about your experience being a NICU parent and what that's like? I know you mentioned earlier, like, they're not home. But even, like, talk about, like, the nursing staff, too. Um, I was going to say, like, one, I will say, yeah, it's it's not fun knowing that your child or children don't get to come home with you. Um, I will say it's nice when they get the rest hmm. um, before it gets really chaotic. But also, like, knowing that that was going to be the case for us from the very beginning has helped it tremendously. Mm. I think it's a different situation if you unexpectedly go into labor early and didn't expect that to happen. Mm. I feel like that can be kind of a traumatic moment. But with that, they have been so amazing. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't even think about like our babies aren't getting taken care of really really well yeah like i don't leave thinking i hope they're gonna be okay tonight Mm -hmm. like i know they're gonna be okay yeah um and i don't this may sounds kind of bad but it's like i don't have to like think about them i think about them in other ways i feel like when i'm home but i don't think about them in like anxious yeah, yeah, I'm not at all. In fact, I just get excited 
about going to go see them next. I think it's the biggest thing. So. Okay. Sorry there, folks. Folks. We had a camera die or memory card run out. Not sure. But we'll figure it out. We're almost done. Yeah. I have one more thing to say about the um, the Nick, NICU thing. Okay. Um, and now that I'm saying this, I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> Dang it. What was I going to say? Oh, it's midnight. I know. I just looked oh, at that. My. I okay. know. I don't know what time we started at that. We're almost there. Yeah. Um, I think I forgot what that last thing was. Don't then let's, let's wrap it up with this question. Someone's watching this video. And I don't know. Like, I don't even think they're pregnant with quintuplets. They're just maybe pregnant and they're scared. Or maybe someone's watching this video and they're not pregnant and they want to be pregnant. I don't know. Some woman's watching this and she's down. Like, what would be the encouragement you would give to someone who's kind of walking the same path that we've been on? It's only temporary. Hmm. And, I mean, like, the two things you said were two drastically different scenarios. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of, I'm trying to do like a, a general um, and I think kind of what I mentioned earlier and like how I kind of got through the pregnancy was I knew God was going to get us through it. Hmm. And this is, this is hard because it's like not everyone watching this necessarily even believes in God. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know what to say to that necessarily mm-hmm. because I put my full trust in him and I believe that that's what got us through it um and my hope is that if somebody is watching this and they want some type of encouragement i would say that's my encouragement i mean i don't i literally don't know how i could have gotten through it Mm -hmm. um without knowing that he was going to get me through it yeah so yeah that's that's what i've got that's what i've got (laughs) I think you did great. Are there, is there anything else that you think you like? I think as we could talk about this for hours. Mm-hmm. And we already have. Yeah, we already have. <laughs> but is there anything else that you'd like to add to this video specifically? Or? Um, the pink and white, white blanket is from Ikea. <laughs> we had some people asking about That's that. That's been too. another heated topic in the comments is this blanket. Man. <laughs> ikea <laughs> so also sometimes i wear the blanket because even though we're in phoenix arizona everybody has ac and it's cold and yeah. sometimes i get really cold although we've got the ac up really high right now yeah. so i'm not too cold so anyways no i don't think i have anything else yeah. oh that was pretty that was pretty funny that was though. Good, that was i was like good. wait did we never mention anything yeah. about that well i'm proud of you <laughs> thanks very proud of you <laughs> I, yeah, for me, seeing you hold all the babes today, it was like, wow, I cannot believe that you did this. This is crazy. And like every like woman in the NICU today was like, you go, mom. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty It was pretty fun to like see everybody kind of like get excited, get excited and be like, somebody told me that you were holding all five. And they're like, I yeah. had to come see it. it was, that was pretty cool. I, it's, been, it's been really cool getting to know all the nurses and stuff. It's been awesome. So, it's been really cool. And they're always really surprised when they find out they knew there were quints there and they finally see me and they're like, you had the quints? <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten that a lot. <laughs> mm. That's been funny. Anyways. Oh, I got one more question. How are you doing though? Like, So it's now 36 days? Something like that. Since they've been born? Five and a half weeks. The, let's, we'll keep this short and sweet, but like, how do you, how are you doing? I feel great. Yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah, I don't really know how much. I Are you feel still like pretty sick from food. Like, do you not want to eat food, no. or how's I mean, your appetite? Sometimes honey? I eat more than you do. Yeah, that's amazing. I, it's like weird being in this position now because I'm like, I don't even remember what it was like. Right. Honestly, well, like I do, but like, I'm like in my head, I'm like, how did I not eat food? But then I'm almost like, oh, and no, I didn't feel good. So, anyways, I don't know. It's it's really cool to see. I eat me food. Dad, but just I feel like I, I got my old wife back again. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I just feel like I just think it's crazy how, like, 
it was so immediate. Yeah. Like that day I was eating a bunch of food again. Like mm. it was crazy. And then in terms of just like physically recovering from C-section and having my gut torn open, um, honestly, I like, I know this isn't everybody's story. Again, another thing that I'm just blown away by. I know this isn't everybody's story, but like I feel like it has gone very, very well. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say it's a piece of cake, but like I wouldn't say it's been terrible as bad as I thought it was going to be mm-hmm. kind of like the whole epidural thing. Yeah. Um, right. So I'm like very thankful and surprised by that. Again, I don't understand it. Yeah. You're killing it. Um, you're also pumping a lot and you're doing great mm-hmm. there. Can I share about yeah, go for it. the milk bank right now has about a 19 day supply to feed all five children fully on Stephanie's breast milk, which is crazy. That's yeah. just what they have in storage. That's not counting when I'm like bringing, bringing still in. bringing yeah, in on a daily basis. So again, but I, I do want to like, I think I want to end it on this note. Like, it's it's even kind of it's weird almost starting like a YouTube channel. And it's really interesting to see how many people have watched the stuff. Mm-hmm. We do not want to come across as like this is because we're awesome. Like no, like even I'm gonna gonna stir the pot a little bit. Like, ruffle ruffle some feathers. Ruffle some feathers. Do it. <laughs> like it is amazing what you have done, but like if that is what we only focused on, mm-hmm. we will have failed in this YouTube channel. Yeah. What we're focusing on primarily is what God is doing. Yeah, absolutely. You would agree. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. And yeah. so, like, that is our goal. There's no reason to do this other than that. Yep. I, because, one, he created us, but he created those five babies. Yep. And like I said before, like, I would not have gone through it, gotten through it without mm-hmm. his help. Yep. And so... so. Yeah, we praise God and mm-hmm. we we give him the glory and we don't know how that fully plays out like through the YouTube channel, but no for idea. the time being, like that is what we do want to leave people with. Mm-hmm. It's like how thankful we are for what he's given us. So Yeah, again, another very long video. <laughs> um I don't understand we talk so much. People watch it, though. I, cool. I guess so. If, so you, honestly, if you made it all the way here. Yeah, really. Thank you for watching it. And yeah. then like the comments got me a little bit that one video, <laughs> but I, I'm still interested to know like what do what do you think about th- these videos and um, we'd love to hear your thoughts and thank you for watching and yeah um, I feel cringy saying this but if you have feel free to subscribe <laughs> to the channel that would be helpful too are we gonna link that song in the yeah, in we'll the description below song. cool we'll try to put that there um, it's a good song. I did start a blog, but I made like two blog posts, but I'll get back on that eventually. We'll link that there. And Okay, I got to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to us. Thank you, Stephanie, for growing five babies. <laughs> I love you. Thank you, God, for growing the five babies. Mm-hmm. I said I love you. I love you, too. Okay. I love you so much. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Toodles. <laughs>